couple of goals back in this second half as well. And the referee checks with her assistants and both goalkeepers. And we are good to go in the second half. Manchester United quickly getting the ball out to their defenders as they did for a large part of this first half. Turner, who got the fourth goal in the 44th minute, quickly getting her first touch of the second period. Burnley trying to press higher up the pitch, perhaps, than they did in the opening 45 minutes. Here's Millie Turner, who got the first goal, so both centre-backs on the score sheet for Manchester United today. Battle with the ball down the flank, trying to pick out Sigworth, but it's cut out, and Bickett can now bring it away. She finds Kerry Hope, and her pass forward, aiming for Priestley, was cut out. So Kerry Hope with that long throw forward towards Thomas. It was cut out by Turner, and suddenly Manchester United have got a lot of space to break into. It was Toon with the pass, and it's 5 0. Toon picking out very well. Kirsty Hansen, who'd found some space. On the left-hand side, she got into the box and she stabbed at what looked like a deflected shot past Lauren Bracewell into that far corner and just not the start that Burnley wanted to this second half, Joe. No, definitely not. Um, and, and that's part of the issue. The higher up the girls push, the more space they're leaving behind for Manchester United to exploit. And that's exactly what they did in that, that sequence, just waited for, for the space to appear and then broke into it quickly. When it did appear... It appeared remarkably quickly for Toon to break into and to find that pass for Hansen. Yeah, just moved away from Nick in the centre there, really. Kirsty Smith winning possession there from Cooper, who's on a yellow card from the first half. And it required Dykes to come across and, and cut it out. But Manchester United can build again. Millie Turner right in front of us here. Finds Amy Turner, her centre-back partner. Crossing the halfway line. Sigsworth on that right hand side who's found plenty of space herself again the change of play quickly to Smith Hansen turns Cooper and gets the cross into the box she picks out Toon and it was a decent ball but she could only smack the shot against her left shoulder by the look of it <laughs> Can't have a little chuckle when things like that <laughs> Well, Burnley took the goal kick quickly and instead of deciding to go long, they took it short and Manchester United spotted it and quickly closed down possession and Daniel Cooper is now going to have a throw to take on this right-hand side, deep inside her own half. In fact, she's going to allow Megan Dykes to take it instead. Dykes with a long throw towards Worthington who flicks it on, but that flick on has gone out of play. No, it hasn't gone out of play. Well, the linesman appeared to be shaking his head there to say that it hadn't gone out of play. But he didn't raise his flag. Turner picked it up anyway and took a throw. Turner to Smith. Smith tried to turn and found Staniforth, who then tried to turn herself. And it was Megan Dykes with the tackle, and it looked like she used her hand to claw the ball away. And it's going to be a free kick to Manchester United, about four yards from the corner of the Burnley box. Again, three players standing over it. No, Katie Zellum decides it's not for her, so she leaves Toon and Staniforth. I'd imagine it's going to be Staniforth, Joe, because she's been dangerous with them so far. Yeah, she's whipped in a few great balls early on. Well, it is Staniforth with that right foot. She gets it towards Turner. Great clearance by Sammy Fleck there. Very good clearance because there are a couple of Manchester United players lurking. Unfortunately, it does fall to United on the edge of the box. Sigsworth finds Toon and Another a huge one. tackle. Sammy Fleck there who made some important blocks in the first half as well. Sigsworth now. She turns and goes back to her full-back positions. And Amy Turner can look to build again. Staniforth, who's found herself at left-back for the time being after taking that free kick. And she now plays it to 
Kirsty Smith, who I think was trying to get back to her left back position and wasn't really ready for possession, but Man United have carried on anyway. Zellum, nice bit of footwork to get away from Priestley. Now Battle, Battle curls it in, and Bracewell does really well to come and claim that. She did have a little bit of pressure on her, but I'm not entirely sure Kirsty Hansen was that interested in going to tackle for the ball in the end. Bracewell's clearance just skewed a bit, and Cooper has to clean up with the header, and she nods it out. She tried to pick out Hansen, um, a Hamer, but it just drifted out of play, and Man United take the throw quickly, and suddenly their centre backs are involved in the game again, Joe. Yep, um, changing the ball at will, really. Um, very controlled at the back, they've just not looked under any pressure at all, really. Turner crosses the halfway line and then gets it out to Smith. Smith very quickly to Hansen. Hansen turns, trying to keep the ball in on that goal line. She does manage to do so. Turner, good pass inside to Staniforth, but Staniforth can't find Ross. And Burnley managed to wiggle it away. And Dykes' clearance there just hit a Manchester United player on its way out of play. Was that early goal the, the what well, seems the obvious thing to say, but was it the worst thing that could have happened at the start of the second half? Yeah, you just want that opportunity to just come out and settle into your game a little bit, a bit like they did in the first half, but um, yeah, um, devastating blow to get a, a fifth goal just as soon as they've come out, but not unexpected. Yes, Manchester United have seen a lot of the ball today and they've created plenty of chances. Could have another one here as Sigsworth dances past a couple of tackles. Staniforth, lovely back heel. Sigsworth now, she wants it on her right foot and it was on her left so she couldn't get the shot away. Zellum, and now is a right footed shot, but it goes well over the bar from Kirsty Smith. That one was harmless. And Burnley are going to get the chance to build from a goal kick. And Manchester United have created lots of chances, but actually, Bracewell's probably only made two or three saves. There have been a lot of shots that have gone off target. Yeah, I think maybe the the um, kind of the way that Burnley have set up, where they've got a lot of players in the middle of the park, it's forcing Manchester United to take shots from further afield. But um, been grateful to see a lot of them whistle over the bar. Salem just nudged off the ball, but she got the ball away, and the referee plays advantage. So Sigsworth can get down that right wing. She's got three players in front of her for company, so she comes back to battle instead. Sigsworth again, right footed cross into the box. Thankfully, Hamer's there to clean up. Kirsty Smith, she wants it on her right foot. She can't get the left footed cross away. She finds Toon, and again, it's a good block, and Bickett can nudge the header away. Who's going to get there first? It looks like Battle's going to win the race, and she finds Staniforth, who's been a constant threat. Right footed, low ball into the box, and Ross just jumped over it, hoping that there'd be a Manchester United player on the end of it. Kirsty Hansen was the nearest, but it just evaded her. And Burnley can just have a little bit of respite once again. Yeah, I think the Burnley fans are uh, very pleased to see that one creep wide. Well, with a, a ball forward, Greenhouse gets there, but Toon also got there, and it was her foot that just nudged it out of play for a throw in, which is going to be taken on that far side by Kerry Hope. Priestley flicks it on, Worthington now. Not much she could do with that one, Joe. She, she could get ahead to it, but she had no one to go to with it. No, and that's been the problem. The second and third ball, a lot of it's been it's kind of up round the head or up round the chest. There's no chance to get on the ball and, and play. Danielle Cooper, good tackle there. And Burnley are going to have a throw about five, ten yards inside the Manchester United half, which Cooper can take after Hansen's interception. In fact, Cooper again leaving it to Megan Dykes. She's going to take the long throw. She's got a few options in front of her. One of them is Thomas, but it goes over her head. Smith just nodding it out of play, and again, Burnley have made about 15 yards down that flank, and Cooper will take this throw. Worthington, Thomas amongst those who are wanting it, it goes over Thomas's head. Cooper gets the second ball though, 
And then Priestley gets it away from Toon. And now what can Hamer do? Unfortunately, nothing because Priestley just caught Toon. And the referee awards a little bit of a soft free kick there. Yeah, a bit disappointing that. It would have been nice to see how that unfolded, but the referee sees what she sees. Turner takes the free kick quickly. Battle crosses the halfway line, but then seeing options in front of her were limited, goes back to the other Turner. Millie Turner. Back to Battle again, who once again has acres of space in front of her. Greenhouse tries to close it down, but a, a neat interchange means Battle can come in field before Thomas gets in. Priestley, Greenhouse. Greenhouse thumps the ball forward. Can Thomas get on the end of that one? Unfortunately not. Megan Earps had a good start in position. Turner crosses the halfway line. Kirsty Smith finds Kirsty Hansen. Hansen comes inside on that right foot. Three players in front of her, and she was closed down to an effect where she couldn't get the pass she wanted. Greenhouse's ball forward had Priestley interested once again, but once more, a really good starting position there from the Manchester United goalkeeper meant that she could just sniff out the danger pretty quickly. Long clearance crosses the halfway line. Smith tries to bring it down. And now it's Worthington's ball down the flank to Hamer. What can Hamer do? Turner comes across and she just shepherds the ball into her possession before finding her goalkeeper. Three Burnley players there. But Manchester United's passing and their ability to find space in a tricky position has got them out of a couple of holes so far today, Joe. Yeah, so very comfortable on the ball, every single player across the park. Um, just no panic, just laying it into feet. A long ball forward there. Great save by Lauren there. Superb play by Lauren Bracewell. We've just praised Megan Herbs for coming off her line and quickly sniffing out some danger, but there was a long ball towards Sigsworth. And Bracewell was pouncing off her line to get on the end of that one and, and claim the danger and make sure that there was no further goal. Hamer cuts inside. Unfortunately, Staniforth can get there ahead of Worthington, and now Zellum can play it to the dangerous Toon, who turns and finds space, and she runs into plenty of it. Can't quite receive the return pass, though. It's a good block before Sigsworth lashes it against the bar, and the rebound once more falls so kindly for a Manchester United player. This time it's Kirsty Hansen who makes it 6 0. Yeah, the speed and uh, power there of Toon just going through the centre, just struggling to stay with her. And incredibly unlucky once more for Burnley because Flex come across there and made a really good block. And the ball has fallen so kindly for Sigsworth, who's thumped it against the bar. And then the rebound, as we've mentioned, just falls nicely for Hanson to make it six. And it's just one of those days, is it, Joe? Yeah, I think so. Again, though we said earlier on, I think luck comes with you when you're working hard and getting yourself in the right position. Um, you know, there's two or three Manchester United players following that shot in, trying to get on the score sheet. Well, Man United are going to make a couple of changes now. Norwegian international Forrest Dottor is going to come on, signing from Chelsea earlier this year. And we're also going to see Tara Bourne as well. So, in fact, it's going to be a triple change for Manchester United. So, if it's sad enough, is enough. Kristen Press is one of them. So, Sigsworth comes off and she's replaced by Press. Forrest.org comes on for Smith. And then the final change, we'll see the fourth goal scorer, Amy Turner, replaced by Tara Bourne. So a couple of changes in defence for Manchester United. And then one up front as well. But I think a lot of it is elementary, unfortunately, at this stage, Joe. Absolutely. You just see the quality of this team that they're able to bring on internationals at the stage of the game. An hour on the clock and it is 6 0 here now to Manchester United. Two goals added to their first half tally of four. 
and Hansen has uh, switched sides with those substitutions. So she's now gone out onto the right wing with Kristen Press on the left. Ross makes that pass out to Hansen. Hansen with the uh, right foot across. And we've seen her all afternoon try and cut in on the right foot from uh, the left hand side. And across is uh, deflected out for another corner. And again, Manchester United are putting plenty of players in the box. They've got so much height in there as well, haven't they, Joe? Yeah, um, something that's really obvious when you're sitting here at the side of the pitch. Yeah, a huge height differential between the two teams. A couple of those subs that are pretty tall as well. It's going to be Staniforth uh, to take the corner, right footed out swinging. In fact, it's a pretty flat one, and Lauren Bracewell does very well to get a hand to that one because the substitute, Thoris Dotto, was just behind her. But she got up high to palm it away for another corner on the uh, near side now, which Staniforth is going to trot across and take. And this time she goes short because she's been given that option to do so by two, and they exchange passes. Two now slides it along the edge of the area and it comes out to battle whose shot was probably going wide before Danielle Cooper cleared but now there's a chance for Burnley to break they've got three on one if they can get there but unfortunately for Manchester United Tara Bourne just comes out and sniffs out the danger when Thomas had a chance if she got there first to break and find a couple of players but good defending there by the substitute who's come straight into the game Tara Bourne at centre half Megan Dykes with the long ball forward. Thomas this time does flick it on. Hamer can't quite get there first, and Zellum can clear up and find Bourne. Stand a fourth. Worthington gets a good foot in there. Zellum, slightly rushed pass, which just bounces over Cooper's head, and Press gets the flick down the line before Dykes gets in and finds Worthington. Worthington's ball can find Priestley fire a deflection Priestley's got a couple of plays in front of her but she does well there and she's won the throw in after it's stabbed out of play by Zellum Cooper to take the throw and she's looking in front of her she's got Thomas and she's got Hamer it goes down the line Zellum cuts it out Worthington gets a touch on it but Manchester United can come away now here's Greenhalgh Hope on that far side. Her ball forward takes a deflection and Manchester United again can break on that far side. This time through Hansen. And Bickett in the right place at the right time uh, to cut out the return pass. Yeah, considering the scoreline, she's had a good afternoon, Cara. It's not been easy for any of those Burnley defenders, has it, Joe? Absolutely not. Wouldn't have liked to have been in there this afternoon. <laughs> And the throw goes back to the substitute, Tara Bourne. Her crossfield pass is cut out by Priestley, but Press can get it. And then Battle. Battle's actually switched flanks now as well with the substitutions. So she's come to left back, having spent most of the match at right back. Hansen comes inside on her left foot and uh, pass takes a deflection. Yes, Joe, we were talking beforehand and we said, is this the kind of occasion you, you wish you were still playing in? <laughs> Prior to the game, I said absolutely <laughs> yes. Having watched it unfold and maybe not. <laughs> I'd have been needing gas and air on the sidelines, definitely. <laughs> Staniforth to take the, uh, the corner on the far side. It's a flat one. Goes into the middle and Burnley just about managing to clear it. Cooper there on the far post with an important tap away. I think it was Hansen who had the final shot for Manchester United, but well positioned there, Cooper, on the post. Looks like Burnley are going to be making a substitution in the next few moments as well, because there's a, a player uh, stripped off in front of us, Nicola Shirtcliffe is going to be getting involved. What would you be hoping to see from her? Um, Nick's bright and got lots of pace, a little bit tricky, um, usually plays at full back, um, so hopefully if she can come on just give us a bit of something um, going forward as well as um, trying to support the back as well. Here's Battle. Former 
Chelsea player Thoris Dottor there. She's played it to Tara Bourne. And where we saw in the first half maybe that Burnley were pressing on the halfway line, Joe, it seems they're now yeah. pressing 15 yards deeper. Yeah, I think maybe fitness is telling a little as well here. Um, we've already discussed, you know, the, the amount of time that the girls have had to prepare for this game. I think there's just a massive difference um, in fitness, speed, strength. Um, it's clear to see, you know, the difference between the professional setup um, and the girls that have had a couple of weeks just to get themselves ready for this game. Absolutely, a reminder that Burnley season, of course, uh, was cut short by uh, being null and voided due to the uh, second or third coronavirus lockdown. So they haven't played too much football over recent weeks. Manchester United, meanwhile, have been continuing in the WSL. And so here is that substitution. Nicola Shirtcliffe replacing Daniel Cooper, who picked up a, uh, a yellow card in the first half for a tackle over on that far side. How would you, you sum up her afternoon, Joe? I think she's had a tough afternoon, uh, Danny. Um, bombarded down both sides, really, the, the, the full-backs. Um, but um, she had a couple of good interceptions and clearances, and you, you always get the same with Danny. really works hard, um, good on the ball once she gets it. It's not been an easy afternoon Absolutely for either full-back, has it? Definitely not. The amount of space that Manchester United have somehow managed to find when they have pressed forward. Bracewell takes the uh, the goal kick forward. Worthington's there, challenged for it, and she wins the second ball, and she lumps it forward towards Thomas, who, if she could have brought it down, might have had some space to get into, but Manchester United managed to win it through Bourne. And now they can build again through battle. And space now for Hansen to get into. A, a, not sure Toon got a touch on that, but plenty of space for Hansen, whose cross comes into the box, and the substitute, Nicola Shirtcliffe, is involved straight away with an yeah. important header. Very good header. And very well placed as well, because there were a few players lurking for Manchester United, as there have been whenever they've managed to get forward. They seem to have four or five attacking players in dangerous positions regularly. Hansen, who's switched to that right flank, as we said, is having a bit of joy down there now, as she did earlier on. She scored both the goals in the second half here at Leyland. Shirtcliffe trying to find Hamer, but the pass just didn't quite have the bend that she wanted on it, and it goes out for a throw, which Turner takes very quickly. Three quarters of the game gone here now at the county ground. Manchester United 6-0 up in this FA Cup fourth round tie. Looks like Chloe Maps uh, warming up on the sideline for Burnley, so maybe a change coming up from. Yeah, there have been some tireless uh, runs made by both the strikers so far today, Katie Thomas and Eva Priestley, but they haven't been able to get much on the ball. A wriggling shot there which just goes wide of the uh, post from press, turning onto her left foot and uh, firing it just past the post. Bracewell happy to watch that one go by because she knew her angles on that one. A reminder that, uh, well, it looks like Man United are going to go through in this one. They will face either Liverpool or Leicester in the next round, and that tie is still nil-nil after an hour in that game at Leicester. Bracewell's... Uh, Goal kick out to Shirtcliffe on this near side. She heads it down to Staniforth. Battle. Ross now has got a ch chance to get back at it. It's a foul on the edge of the area by Dykes. Right on the edge of the box, that one. A tight decision for the referee to make as to whether she had just crossed that white line into the penalty area. Thankfully for Burnley, it was just outside the box, but a bit of a desperate challenge there because Ross was just pulling back that right trigger, wasn't she? Absolutely, yeah. One of those defend defensive tackles sometimes have just got to be made, but yeah, very close to the edge of the box. It's fortunate that it's not a penalty. It's going to be Katie Zellum, the uh, Manchester United captain, to take this free kick right on the edge of the area. Bracewell's just lining up her wall. She's got four players in it. Zellum's been tidy but relatively quiet in attacking sense so far today. What can she do with this one? She's standing over it with her right foot. She's going to try and bend it in to the near post, but couldn't quite get the dip she wanted on it, and it drops 
underneath, uh, over the crossbar. And we're going to see a Manchester United uh, substitution. In fact, we're going to see two more Manchester United subs now. So their final subs to their quota. And one of them is going to be a change of goalkeeper. So Fran Bentley is the new goalkeeper for Manchester United. And their final substitution will see Ella Toon, the uh, second goal scorer, replaced by Carrie Jones. But Toon has been a constant threat, hasn't she, Joe? all afternoon, just finding mm -hmm. pockets of space wherever she wanted. Yeah, I was just thinking, I think the uh, Burnley midfield and defence will be happy to see her uh, retreat from the pitch. She's had a fantastic afternoon and, and really driven through that middle, making it difficult for the midfield and defence to get anywhere near her. Lively and talented player who just seemed to find pockets of space and get the ball away quickly when she was on the edge of the box. So perhaps a, a bit of a breather there for Burnley's defence with her coming off. But uh, Carrie Jones will go and sit it in just behind and the strikers. That's Cara Bickett there ahead of her. This, this brilliant game that we've got here remaining in Leyland 20 minutes here this afternoon. Burnley taking on Manchester United in the FA Cup sure, fourth round. The ball down the line. Uh, that's that's going to land on top of the dugout in front of us. Or Liverpool in a couple of weeks' so Manchester time. United will have uh, my name's Matt Jones. Uh, Joe Holt joins me here in like Leyland. And uh, we will just go through as well. Play continuing for now. So Bentley gets the ball out to Tara Bourne. Now Turner again, out to battle. Hamer comes out to meet her, but they manage to get possession away. And here's Pr Crossfield switch, trying to pick out Thoris Dutier. And now she finds Hansen, who comes inside, as she has done all afternoon, regardless of what flank she's been on. Cross comes into the box, but that one is going to drift harmlessly out for a goal. Second sub now, and it is going to be Chloe Mapp who comes on. And she replaces Katie Thomas, who's just worked tirelessly up front for very, very little reward all afternoon, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. She's she's worked her socks off, Katie, um, but it's just not stuck up front. Um, the two centre halves from Manchester United have, have just been dominant in that area. Um, so she's done a lot of chasing round to, for, like you say, very little reward, bless her. And unfortunately, that's been one of the issues for Burnley this afternoon because when they have got the ball forward and across the halfway line, they haven't been able to make it stick because Thomas has not had anyone to get on the end of it when she gets on the end of it herself. 73 minutes gone. Manchester United 6-0 up here. Dykes will take the long throw down the line. Trying to pick out Worthington, but that one has just drifted out of play without anyone touching it for another throw in this time to Manchester United. Well, Hanson was trying to win it over on that far side, but a good tackle by Cara Bickett gets the ball pretty quickly away from another dangerous Manchester United attack. I think it was Staniforth over on that far side. And that's a very good touch from Hamer. Can she now get on the end of it? Or is Turner going to get across quickly? But she does, and then she feints to pass back to the keeper and instead turns, finds Battle, and Manchester United can build again. Here's Press. She skips past two tackles, nudges it to Battle, who goes inside to Zellum. Zellum finds Staniforth. Staniforth past Bickett. Unleashes the shot, it smacks against the crossbar once again for Manchester United. Press brings it down inside the area. Hamer puts the tackle in, she doesn't get there. Battle. And now Zellum has it again. Just a chance for Burnley to regroup as the play slows down. And Staniforth goes all the way back to Bourne near the centre circle. Zellum again. Nudges the ball between her feet, but there's no Manchester United player there. And it's a long ball forward by Hamer. Unfortunately, Matt can't get on the end of it. And Burnley again can rebuild, uh, Manchester United again can rebuild through Bourne. And here, once again, Matt B barking those instructions out of shape, shape. 
yeah, trying to keep the, the girls well organised. It's what he builds all his teams on and really important to him. So I just want to make sure that the girls keep going right to the 90th minute. Battle back to Turner. Now the ball inside to Ross. Hansen coming inside, flicking it through. But Carrie Jones couldn't get a telling contribution on that. What will Matt B make of this second half, Joe, and compare it to the first half? How have Burnley grown into the game and how have they, they found the experience? I think they, they get, they've stuck at it. Um, and you can see from up here the shape of the team has generally stayed really strong. Um, it's The goals have come when that United have managed to pull that um, shape out of position um, and catch them on the break. Um, but, you know, we, we've talked about the, the difference in quality. I think the girls have, have given a good account of themselves, um, considering. Carrie Jones there, Bickett was nearby. It's the ball into the box from Hansen, and it just drifts over the bar and out of play. In fact, it looks like Bracewell may have got a touch on that because the referee is signalling a corner. Or did it take a, a touch off one of the defenders? Either way, it's going to be a Manchester United corner, and it's going to be taken once more by Staniforth. Burnley preparing another substitution down here in front of us and I'm sure Matt B will wait until uh, this corner has taken place for it. Staniforth to a whip in an in-swinging corner with her right foot. It goes deep, it's towards Turner at the back post and there was a nudge there and the referee quite rightly signalling a free kick after a foul on Hamer and here comes uh, what will be the final substitution of the afternoon for Burnley and it's going to see Olivia Greenhalgh who had that knock in the first half, replaced by Ken D. Owen. Tough afternoon for uh, Greenhouse in midfield. Joe just couldn't get as much of the ball as she wanted. Yeah, um, very tough afternoon for all the midfielders today. Really, United have zipped it around so quickly. They've spent a lot of time chasing shadows and trying to get close. Um, but the ball's been moved so quickly, it's been really difficult for them. But, you know, she's given a good account of herself this afternoon. A few um, decisive touches in the first half. Hamer trying to loop the ball forward. Born there, going across to put pressure on. Map and it goes out for... Another Manchester United throw, and in fact it's a foul throw by Battle. You don't see them given too often this day and age, do you? <laughs> no, very rarely these days. You often see players protesting for them to be given, but and certainly fans protesting for them to be given when they're in the grounds, but you very rarely see the officials actually give them. So can Dykes do something here with the long throw down the line? Four players in front of a two aim four, including the tall Worthington. It does go towards Worthington, but it's Battle who wins it. Dykes then gets the second header before Staniforth breaks forward. Lovely ball down the line to Press, who's got loads of space to get into, and she's got three players to aim for in the middle. One of them is Carrie Jones, who heads wide at the near post. But it's frightening how quick those counter-attacks happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from defence to attack in a matter of seconds, um, and that's where you know the goals have come from, where, like I say, they've managed to get around the shape that Burnley have, have, have tried to, to put in place. 11 minutes or so left to go. Millie Turner finding a centre-half partner, Tara Bourne, who came on not too long ago for Amy Turner. And a touch there from a Burnley player, just taking the ball away from Nick Worthington before a really important interception once again from Sammy Fleck. Uh, Sammy Fleck. Now a long ball down the line by Dykes for Matt to run on to. But once more, seeing a really good interception there, Joe, that could have led to a goal. Yeah, the defence have worked hard and got some really good touches. It's just unfortunate sometimes when we've got those touches that it's fallen to the feet of a Manchester United player very quickly. Battle down the left-hand side. Press makes a run in front of her, but she uses a decoy to find Staniforth. Staniforth in the box, she finds Carrie Jones. Jones is shot. And she was under a bit of pressure there because, uh, again, Fleck was coming in to make sure she didn't have as much time and space as she wanted. And Bracewell makes a good but comfortable save. But it doesn't look like there's been any let up whatsoever from Toon coming off and Jones coming on. No, definitely not. Um, all of these Manchester United uh, players are very talented uh, footballers and they've come on and made a difference. Yeah. 
Bourne to Turner. Turner again looks in front of her and sees space, but Shercliffe does really well there. He saw how much uh, space Press had on this right-hand flank. Got across. Yeah, she's done really well, Nick, since she's come on. Had a big right boot on that one and cleared it over the stand here. Turner now as Manchester United build again through Bourne. Good interception by Bickett. There was a run being made there by Priestley. I think she might have been offside by the time the pass was played, but Man United cut it out anyway. And here's Staniforth. She gets it again after Burnley did cut out the initial one. Worthington making a good tackle and Hamer again involved. And Ross now gets it out to that right-hand side. Forrest Dutter has got a couple of options. She goes back inside to Ross and now Zellum. Press skips past four tackles, gets the return from Stanforth, tries the shot, and Megan Dykes it is this time with a very important block, getting across in front of her player and making sure that it goes out for a corner. And despite it being 6-0, Joe, Manchester United still putting six, seven players in the box for a corner. Yeah, I think um, we get when it gets to 6 0 it's when we're, uh, we're all looking for a goal, aren't we? So uh, I think that will uh, continue until the 90th minute, and that's the professionalism of this side as well uh, to keep going to the to the final whistle. Well, it was Worthington there who won the header. She was under pressure from Turner, who got the opening goal this afternoon in the 11th minute. A good header away from Worthington means that Man United have a throw-in, which battle takes to press. And now Ross. Ross herself perhaps surprised that she's not got on the score sheet. Hamer makes another good interception. She brings the ball down. Has she got options? Ball doesn't cross the line. Worthington now with the clip down the line. Here's Priestley. What can she do? Worthington. Hamer's running onto the end of that. Map is in the middle if she can get there. But Bourne is well positioned and gets across. And Manchester United are able to, to sniff out that danger. And Zellum. Now suddenly find space for Manchester United to attack quite quickly. Bourne, Turner. Just the seven minutes remaining here. Manchester United continue to have plenty of the ball. There really has been no let-up from them all afternoon. Turner now has the ball in the centre circle. And she looks up and Burnley have pressed up and made it more difficult for her to pick out a pass. Here's Press. Tries to clip it inside to Ross. And once again, Fleck comes across and makes an important interception and gets the ball out for a throw-in. Yeah, this is Sammy's first full 90 minutes uh, this year, so she's had a really good afternoon considering that. And, and you'll know more than myself and, and many of the people watching, Joe, how hard it is to get through 90 minutes when you haven't played for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it'll have been a tough afternoon for the girls this afternoon. I've only played two games since the, the restart, um, and both games have gone to uh, extra time, and so there's been a, a lot of um, running in the legs. Um, in those games. Well, Worthington's just conceded a free kick here and Staniforth is going to take it. She's been dangerous with these set pieces all afternoon. Two people in the wall. And what can Staniforth do with it? Curls it in, it's a really good claim from Lauren Bracewell. She was under plenty of pressure there, Joe, but managed to get through a body of players to, to win the ball. Yeah, as I said earlier, really experienced keeper Lauren um, and, and good at in that sort of area, coming and taking the ball. Uses the height well. Fleck. Trying to get it out to Hope on that far side. I think we've seen Fleck not, not often with the ball at her feet, more often with a clearance or a good tackle, haven't we, this afternoon? Yeah, uh, it's been that kind of game, hasn't it, for a centre-half? Lots of blocks and getting in the way of things and, and doing your job, putting your body on the line. So 
So another chance for Dykes to take the long throw down the line. Four Burnley players in front of her. She gets it towards Worthington. It's flicked on, though, by Battle instead, and Burnley are going to have another throw near the halfway line. And it would just be nice to see them get something out of this game in the last four and a half minutes, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Just to test the keeper a little. Well, will they do that now? Priestley's under it, but Staniforth gets there first. Worthington knocks it away from press, but it only goes into the Burnley half of the field. And suddenly Manchester United can break. Kirsty Hansen to Ross. And now press, she skips past one tackle. But it was enough to just make a misjudge where the ball was and Burnley could get players back quickly. Battle now. But they're another good example, Joe, of how Burnley have at times quickly got players around the ball and, and sniffed out and snuffed out a shot. Yeah, they worked really hard, to be fair, um, getting back and um, at this time, stage in the game to be still working as hard as they are um, is a testament to the, the pride and the passion that these girls play with every single week. Um, I'm proud to wear that Burnley badge. Absolutely well. Megan Dykes just conceding a free kick there, 25 yards from goal. Just a little bit too close for st to stand the fourth for the referee's comfort. And that means there is going to be a free kick, which Zellum is standing over. Four players in the wall, which Bracewell is just lining up now to make sure she's got that left-hand post covered. We've seen Dykes put, uh, we've seen Zellum put one over the bar so far. Will she find her range on this occasion? Looks like she might take it short. In fact. I think they might have played a game of rock, paper, scissors there to decide who <laughs> took it. And in the end, Zellum and Battle didn't really know what to do with it. And it was a bit of a wasted opportunity. But Man United still have possession through Turner. Unfamiliar position for her as she looked up to see if there was a cross to make. There wasn't. She found Staniforth, who's now passed to Bourne on the halfway line. Harry Jones. Priestley gets in and gets it away, but Man United do recycle possession well. Clipped into the box. Appeals for handball, turned down. Two minutes to go here. Can Burnley get anything from the remaining minutes? Matt B is barking words of encouragement to his players as he stands with his hands on his hips in front of us. And it's another clearance down the line, right in front of him. And Millie Turner gets possession and quickly gets it to Bourne. He was under a little bit of pressure from Mapp, but just stabs the pass out to that right-hand side. And suddenly Ross has possession. Ross again. Staniforth. Just changed her mind over what she was going to do there, and it fooled Worthington a little. Cross into the box. It's a low one. Carrie Jones flicks it on Ross. Bobbling shot. It was one of those ones where I'm not sure the striker knew where it was going, so the goalkeeper didn't either, and therefore Bracewell did really well to get down to her right-hand side to not only save it, but also to claim it as well, because press was lurking if there was a rebound to be had. Here's Shirtcliffe on this near side. Ball down the line, trying to find Hamer. She's got Turner for company, and it is Turner who gets there first. Loops it up in the air. And Hamer and Priestley are both putting a bit of pressure on here. Can they win the ball? Matt is trying to pressure the goalkeeper too. But Fran Bentley does manage to get her way to Bourne. Now here's Staniforth in midfield. Good interception by Shirtcliffe. And then Dykes with what was hoping to be a telling touch back to her goalkeeper it wasn't it left press with a chance to shoot and for the third time this afternoon Manchester United rattle that crossbar just couldn't quite get enough on it there Joe no I just think tired legs there just um, not quite getting to where she needed to get to the, the idea was right in terms of trying to head it back into Lauren's hands but just didn't quite get enough on it well Bracewell can breathe a sigh of relief it remains at 
as we enter two minutes of added time here. Map has the ball near the halfway line, but it's taken away from her, and now Staniforth goes forward. She receives the return pass. It's going to be a cross into the box, but no Man United players have really got into a telling position there, and thankfully for Burnley, it drifts out on the far side for a throw. But as we enter these closing minutes uh, and moments, Joe, what can Burnley take from today? I think um, I've just got a feel feeling this afternoon of just overwhelming pride for these girls. I think back to five years ago, we got beat 6-0 by Blackpool in the Northwest Women's League, and here they are this afternoon competing in the third tier of English football, playing in the FA Cup against a Super League team full of internationals. Um, I just think they've, they've worked the socks off this afternoon. And, and no disgrace in it. I hope when they, they reflect back on it afterwards that they'll um, have enjoyed the uh, occasion and reflect back on, on the hard work that they've put into this game. Kirsty Hansen there just lashing one over the bar as she eyed a second half hat-trick. She scored in the 47th and 58th minute of this second half, uh, but that's all uh, that they have uh, managed in the second half after getting four in the first. About 40 seconds left here. You just heard Joe talking about how far Burnley have come in a very, very short space of time with those back-to-back -back promotions and their growth, unfortunately, as a team, has been stunted by having two seasons null and voided over the last two years. But Chairman Alan Pace wants this club to be in the uh, Women's Championship by 2025 and experiences like this and games like today uh, will certainly help them grow towards that ambition and hopefully realise that ambition in the coming years. Just seconds left now as Manchester United go in search of one final attack. It really has been relentless from them all afternoon. Battle to press. Back to Turner. Bourne, and uh, Bourne's touch will be the final one of the afternoon. It finishes Burnley nil, Manchester United six here in the FA Women's Cup fourth round. And Joe... We've summed up a little bit what today means and um, how tough an occasion it was always going to be from Burnley and, and you speak of the pride that, that you have of, of what you've seen today. And we've just mentioned there how Alan Pace wants them to be in the Championship by 2025. How can they, they grow from an experience like today? I think they've just got to go away and, and you know, they'll take, be disappointed tonight, rightly so, um, but they'll go away and take some time and and they need to build towards next season. Next season's a massive season for the girls, um, and I know Matt has great ambitions for the, for the club next season in the, the National League, and looking towards the Championship. Um, so it's about taking, getting over the disappointment today, taking the positives from it, and then moving forward into looking into next season. That's the most important, not the result this afternoon. And you've just got to hope that next season is one that they manage to complete, because the last two years have been so frustrating. Yeah, for these girls that, you know, they're going to work, they're going then going to training and working hard, you know, football dominates their, their social life as well as the, you know, like around, everything around the work is dominated by football. Um, so to have that taken away from them two seasons running is really difficult, but hopefully they'll come back stronger in, in August when the season starts again uh, and make the most of the next season. Yeah, fingers crossed they do. It will be a long time uh, before these Burnley players uh, do step back on the pitch, but as we've said, they will grow significantly from this occasion. So sadly, uh, this is where they're running the FA Cup but ends for this season, a 6-0 defeat uh, to Burnley here at the county ground, uh, to Manchester United even here at the county ground in Leyland uh, but that is not all the action for Burnley this afternoon because uh, the men's team in just a handful of moments time are going to be kicking off at Old Trafford against Manchester United so no luck uh, for the women today can the men get an important three points in the Premier League uh, at Old Trafford we will see what happens and you can hear live commentary of that game uh, from Phil Bird and Darren Bentley uh, in the coming minutes uh, Joe thank you very much for, for joining us uh, here at the county ground this afternoon and uh, fingers crossed it's going to be a, a better result for Burnley in a few minutes' time. Let's hope so. Up the clarets.